The web is mobile, the web is also local. So this paradox that um, with this wonderful um, technological tool, we can look from here to New York into a webcam. But at the end of the day, we only want to order pizza here in Zurich. So I think it's a paradox. We have the ability to look globally and the imperative to act locally. Uh, data is the new oil, is one of the terms that um, um, Gert coined yesterday. Um, think about it in terms of your shop. Um, shop is a sort of a surrogate for your website, for what you're doing online. You know, how can you use the data? I believe fundamentally that we don't uh, need necessarily uh, to gear up on tools to generate more data. We do that very successfully. I think what we need to gear up on and tool up on extremely quickly is the ability to draw insights out of data. I think there are very, very few people in the industry who understand the data that's presented in front of them. So all of us can probably go onto our um, first drive, or onto our, onto our C drive, and pick off the gigabytes of data. But who really understands the insight within that? We had a lot of discussion at lunchtime around perfume. Uh, a really interesting insight for me is you know, that women quite often wear men's cologne. These are the kind of things which you can build really much into your marketing programs and leverage online if you understand your customers, your users. I think, bless you, I think in terms of the data, and don't forget the people. Data is oil, um, but there's lots of value to be had in understanding uh, consumers' insights. The other point on the right hand side, you're no longer solely in control. It's worrying and also, I think, inspiring at the same time. People who are your brand users own your brand, co own your brand, co manage it with them requires a huge leap of faith for many boards. Display drives performance. I think one of the things I hope we've hoped to kind of reshape your thinking on is the fact that you know performance, SEM, and display are sort of two different worlds. Um, with some of the tools in terms of remarketing and some of the interest based advertising um, we're doing, we're trying to marry the two worlds. So the science of search and the art of display. I think that's a real kind of um, war cry for you internally to go back and to fight for budgets, which probably aren't at the moment in the inverted commas e-commerce part of the business. I think there's some real change going on there. No line on the right hand side. I think um, we need to get away from online and offline. So I don't think about marketing com campaigns which have some kind of um, outputs in different media. And how does that all work together? Bon Prix was an excellent example of how successful models can scale across geography. I think um, too um, often great local concepts are not scaled properly across geography. And I learned yesterday that there are you know, driver's wines, uh, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and you know, the whole Tavino example is just an example of how you can work very emotionally in the online space. So for me, a couple of our highlights of the last couple of days are say just we've pulled those together in the space of the last couple of hours, so it's uh, probably not um, comprehensive. The question I would be asking myself if I'm sitting where you're sitting is, you know, what's now? And I think the answer to that starts with this question again. Where am I today? And I think quite often businesses um, have a kind of uh, a poor understanding about where they are. They believe to know where they are, but they do you really know where you are in, in a relative context. I think today um, making progress is only part of kind of moving forward. I think making progress is a quiet standstill in today's online environment. So you need to be making dramatic progress. This may be sort of a little bit helpful in terms of a thinking model. I mean, in terms of maturity and the x-axis and, uh, and time across the bottom, um, where do you stand on an S-curve of development uh, within your own context? And I think to be really, really useful, you need to be honest. You need to say, where am I really? Not what I believe to be, but where am I really? And I think what you can then quite elegantly do, and please engage us in the discussion if it helps, to then think about the science of search. If I just click back to in the area here of testing and flighting campaigns, starting off, making sure your products are up, actually covered with keywords, covering the potential, making sure you're always on, etc. That's part of what we describe as the science of search, the stuff that we know that works for businesses inside of retail or outside of retail. I think there's probably one or two tricks in the toolbox which you're probably not all using at the same time. And I'm looking around this room, I see a huge amount of confidence I know exists and stuff I know which other people are not doing. So I think there's still potential in the whole area of search. And then on the other side, the full value of search. We talked a little bit about sort of attribution, you know, research online, purchase offline. The great debate about what length of cookie is correct. Is it a 24 attribution window? Is it a 30 day attribution window? Is it even longer in terms of cycle? And I think that making sure you attribute the true value of search, in inverted commas, online activity, is really important. So just kind of a couple of thoughts here, you know, and many of these are doing this already, but you know, 
we see at the moment, um, um, the, the researches we receive today, about 20% of those we haven't seen in the last 90 days. So every single day we see 20% of the searches on Google are in new terms. So the question I've had is, you know, do you have the right keywords? Are you still using the right uh, terminology to discover and describe your portfolio? Removing budget caps, I mean, it's easy to say, I know, because, you know, um, I've, I've run a number of e-commerce businesses. At the end of the day, you, you know, you want to have a, a sensible business running. You don't want to give up money just to invest money for the sake of it. But I think there are sort of certainly um, lots of signals we see where potential is not being used. You know, first page bid is one of the things. If you're not appearing on the first page, you're not even being seen. So make sure that the keywords you want to activate and the ads you want to activate are appearing on the first page in terms of research, uh, research results. Many big businesses are not doing this. Some small businesses are doing it excellently. A very important point. Improve creatives. I believe this is a kind of a, um, uh, a good uh, um, Google ad in terms of it satisfies all our criteria, apart from the exclamation mark maybe. Um, I think Sarah in the back is one of the experts in this area. But basically, We've developed some really interesting tools around the semantics of you know, which words work and which don't work. Um, one of the things I used to work in, in, in the Mars organization and uh, in the area of pet food, and uh, it's amazing if you ask um, pet owners to describe uh, their favorite experience with their pets, they can write you a nice little story. And in that story is a lot of vocabulary which is encapsulated, which describes how they feel around their pets. So each business has a specific vocabulary, which you know in the offline world. I would question whether you actually reflect that in your online activities as well. One of the good examples is if you think about, um, in, in German, um, the word for pyjamas um, can either be pyjama or nachthemd. Depending on which one you use, you talk to a different target audience. So language is really, really important. And I think generally up until now, it's been a very, very underplayed tool and lever which you can use uh, on your SEM campaigns. Always on. Um, if you're not there, nobody can see you, you know? um, quite logically. I think you need to kind of be aware of that. And people um, have choice online. And if you're not there, you can't sell anything, you can't get any leads. Um, so be always on, would be a recommendation. I talk about Ropa. I feel very passionate about this. Um, everybody knows intuitively it works, and everybody's struggling with the kind of measurement and the attribution part of it. So if we, as a group of people, have cracked that, I think that's a lot of interesting potential for all of us. This both works both in both ways, and a search delivers branding impact. But equally, stuff you're doing in different medium, medium, the media has an impact on search as well. So the ad that we ran in the center um, ad break of the Super Bowl drove a huge amount of search queries. We see a brand like Lascana from the Auto Group. When stuff is done online on YouTube, it drives search queries on Google. So we're seeing lots and lots of things. Understand that interactivity. So branding works in both directions. So I'll leave you with five things, um, very, very brief. I think, think about the keywords, think about the um, ads efficiency, um, think about the always on effect, reflect Ropo, and think mobile first. And for me, that's really much kind of a call to action in terms of multi-channel, not necessarily just mobile devices. <coughs> so that's kind of a very quick summary of, uh, of where we are. Thank you, once again, for taking the time to come to Zurich. I'm not sure that's uh, around the corner, but it felt like the mountain <laughs> climb yesterday evening, I have to say. Um, so it's been really uh, good fun for us. If you'd like to come again, we'd love to have you again. And what will help us is if you can give us some feedback of what worked for you and what didn't work for you, so we can maybe improve um, next time around. So thank you. Have a good trip home. And uh, I hope your country wins the World Cup. <laughs>